Hello, welcome back to the A to Z of archaeology. Today is the letter M, and it also means that we're halfway through the alphabet, and that's probably worth celebrating. So just one moment. Hooray! It's one more. Here we go. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, today, because it's M, we're going to be looking at material culture. Now, material culture is almost anything that is found uh, in an archaeological excavation. Um, but, uh, more often than not, when people think of culture, they think of culture with a capital C. When most think of the word culture, they think of great works of art, artists and musicians. However, there is a broader definition of this word. And when an archaeologist talks of culture, they mean the complicated mass of rules and assumptions that govern our daily lives. It's very hard, actually, to quantify, but it is crucially important. We all know what our culture is, and often it's communicated through the things around us. This is the core of material culture, the objects through which we live our daily lives. Now, the problem is that more often than not in archaeology, we don't find um, great works of art or seminal texts or paintings, as much as that would be wonderful, and occasionally there are standout finds. Um, for the most part, what archaeologists dig up is, in fact, rubbish. Um, in fact, one of my favourite books of all time quite literally calls archaeology rubbish. It just says, archaeology is rubbish, and um, you can... Feel free to quote that whenever you like. Um, but uh, this isn't actually a bad thing. And actually one of the great successes of archaeology in the past 20 or 30 years has been its ability to demonstrate the active role that material culture, the things around us, plays in our social lives. Uh, and in doing this, it's allowed us a window into the way that people approach their lives. The great anthropologist Levi Strauss once said that culture is like language. That is, that like a language, we learn our culture bit by bit, and we pass it on to other people in a similar way, and during this process it can be modified. If culture is language, then objects are words, and this is how we transmit our culture to other people, and during the course of our lives we gain a vast knowledge through objects around us. An excellent example is clothing. When we are young, we are dressed by our parents, and bit by bit we learn associations of clothes, such as boys' clothes, girls' clothes, and which colours we like. Bit by bit we learn to imitate the fashions of the world around us and the clothes that other people wear. We understand those people by what they're wearing, and eventually it is up to us to define ourselves through our own clothing. It is then our choice to what extent we accept the baton of culture offered by our forebears, do we go along with what they accepted, or do we deliberately try and do something different? In this way, culture and cultural change is expressed through the objects around us. So, now we can see that relationships between objects, that's one object and another object, or uh, between an object and a person, um, are extremely useful and very, very important, because um, they allow archaeologists to understand the culture behind the objects and get, gain a window into the ways in which people are using the material culture around them but also what they think about the world and themselves. In the instance of Iron Age roundhouses, the study of material culture has led to a deeper understanding of the house. By logging the location of different elements of material culture, archaeologists have been able to gain a subtle understanding of the associations linked with each part of the house. The careful study of pots from the so-called beaker people culture has revealed not only that these pots were well made and intricate, but in some cases they seem to define people in the grave. The objects with which they're buried are extremely important. Indeed, the study of patterns on pots can tell us a great deal about the associations of that pot. Were they for oil or for food? Were they clean or were they dirty? And the case of the Fossey Cross from Iceland reveals details of a spiritual crisis gripping Europe a thousand years ago. Thor's hammer was an extremely potent symbol, and here he is twisting his beard into the shape of a hammer. But the hammer became entwined around about this time very deliberately with the Christian cross. 
and the Fosse Cross pendant as an attempt to reconcile these two faiths which were coming face to face. So, material culture, extremely useful and very important. It allows us um, an insight into the way that people thought about themselves in the past, into the way that they thought about the world, and also into the different strategies and, and, um, uh, and uses that are applied to objects in order to achieve what are essentially social and living goals in, uh, in everyday life. So that's been M, material culture. Um, please feel free to comment below if you uh, have any comments. Uh, if you have any questions, all you need to do is message me and I shall get back to you as soon as is humanly possible. Um, we do, of course, always love the idea of people subscribing to the channel, so feel free to press the subscribe button just up above. Um, and actually, we do now have a Facebook page. All you need to do is search for Archeo Super Productions on Facebook and uh, click like and you'll be able to get all sorts of content there, which I haven't actually been able to fit in to one of these videos. So, um, uh, for example, uh, the other day, actually, there was a wonderful story about um, the uh, teeth on Vikings being filed down. Um, and I, p I posted that on the Arceo Soup uh, Facebook page. So feel free to pop over and have a look. Until next time, thank you very much.